happy Tuesday, another training, another hat. Um, I'm here to talk today about intermittent fasting. And I am here to talk about this because I get so many questions. This is probably like the number one question I get besides like protein powders. Um, and I've done talks on that before. I have a whole like CMW approved foods list with my recommended protein powders if you're going to consume protein powder. Um, but today I'm talking about intermittent fasting. There's my little video. Um, and I will be, you know, sharing this, my notes with you guys. Um, this is just for my notes and if you guys want a little visual aid. Um, but again, intermittent fasting, I want to remind you guys that intermittent fasting is by no means a diet, right? And that's actually the truth I'm going to talk about. Um, but I'm going to also talk about the good, the bad, and the truth about intermittent fasting. This way you can truly understand if intermittent fasting is something that you should consider doing or if you are currently doing it and you have some concerns or questions about it, I'm here to talk about that. Um, if you're watching me live, say, hey, Kristen, what's up? If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay, please, please, please. Um, this way I can um, say what's up. If you are watching this live and you have questions, you can go ahead and ask those questions. I'll make sure I get to those questions. Or even if you're doing the replay, if you're watching the replay, you can comment below below with your questions and I can make sure that I answer them at some point, okay? Um, but otherwise, I'm going to go right into my talk, all right? So, of course, there are tremendous health benefits for intermittent fasting, okay? So, most importantly, it's clear, you have to understand that intermittent fasting is more than anything a health strategy versus a weight loss strategy. Can it, hey there, Cindy, um, can intermittent fasting help with weight loss? Yes, um, but it's not necessarily designed for that. All right, it is designed for, um, gosh, for health, okay? So the reason why it is designed for health is because of something called cell autophagy, okay? So autophagy means that we're killing off dead cells in the body, okay? And mitochondrial health or cellular health is something that is super, super important and very much getting more attention in the health industry. Um, and so intermittent fasting can help get rid of dead cells, which helps with longevity. It helps with our energy levels. It helps our body run more optimally, right? It helps us get rid of toxins in the body. It helps us get rid of all excess things that we do not need, okay? Um, let me see. If you eat the same thing within a specific window, would that speed up the process? I don't know if I understand that question. Cindy, I'm not gonna lie. If you eat the same thing within the same sort of will, will it speed up the process? No, not necessarily. And it really honestly depends on your body's metabolic function. It depends on your gut health. It's not so much about timing. This is something else to understand, guys. There are so many factors that affect your body's ability to release weight. Okay, and timing is just one minute process, right, of all the things that affect your body's ability to uptake calories or to get rid of calories, to burn them, um, to get rid of toxins, um, you know, to store protein so we can use it for our, our muscle growth, all those things, right? So not necessarily, Cindy, because um, honestly, I'll get to that in a little bit here. But so one thing that intermittent fasting is good about is killing off dead cells, number one, okay? Number two, it's also going to increase your HGH, which is your human growth hormone. Okay, so that is one of the benefits. It'll cause your HGH to spike as well. So human growth hormone is really important, not just for building lean muscle mass in the body and revving up your metabolism, but it's also important for raising your testosterone levels as well. Um, and so that's something that's important, especially as we age and our testosterone tends to um, decrease. And that's why some people take testosterone injections. Um, you know, if we can do intermittent fasting, it can help with HGH um, spiking as well. Okay. Also, one thing I really do um, appreciate about intermittent fasting in a society where food is everywhere, okay, we have food at our fingertips. Food is incredibly convenient, especially here in a first world country. So what's cool about intermittent fasting is that it will actually teach us to listen to our hunger levels and we will actually learn what it feels like to be hungry. And I 100% know that there are people out there, you might even be watching me talk right now, that are afraid about feeling hunger. We actually get like anxiety about being hungry. Comment below if you're one of those people and do not be afraid to be honest. You will not be judged. This is a safe, private community and I guarantee you're not alone if you're afraid to feel hunger. 
I used to be that person. Like, oh my God, like I don't want to get hungry. Like I'm a super active person. I'm all over the place. I was a teacher for 10 years. I was always, you know, doing this pretty much like on, on my feet all day long, teaching classes in meetings, tutoring, uh, coaching track and field. I was doing a bunch of things. So I was like, I, I can't be hungry. I need energy. Okay. And then at some point I was like, why am I afraid to be hungry? One, that I'm not afraid to be hungry. I just love food. That's also true, right? Okay, and I love that, and I'm the same way. But I will tell you, I have spoken to people on consults. I've had clients that have said, like, I just don't want to be hungry. Like, I don't want to go into a workout and, like, get hungry or, like, feel faint. And I always tell them, if that happens, have something with you, and you can eat it at that point. Okay, bring something. If you're going on a hike, you're going on a trip, bring it with you. But it doesn't mean that you need it, Okay. So it is important to learn what it feels like to be hungry because the most important thing about nutrition is eating when you're hungry and eating, not eating when you're not hungry. Most importantly, nutrition for weight loss. Okay. Wanda, I go back and forth with intermittent fasting. It works when I do it. Having consistent sleep is key, 100%. And the reason why consistent sleep is key, I was actually just talking to a client about this. Stephanie, we're talking about adjusting her sleep schedule because she's not getting enough sleep. She's going to bed too late and getting up early. So I was telling her one of the things about sleep, why it's important, not only for your metabolic function, for your recovery, if you are weight training or whatever kind of training you're doing, but it's also important for your hunger creating and hunger suppressing hormones. So when we're not sleeping enough, we're not creating enough leptin. Leptin is our hunger su uh, suppressing hormone and ghrelin is our hunger creating hormone. So if we're not sleeping enough, Wanda makes a really good point here, we're gonna be less likely to stay in that eating window because we're gonna be hungrier probably in the morning. Okay, or you might eat in this window then still be hungry later on, All right? Or if you're not, if you finish eating at 7 p.m. and you're not going to bed till midnight, you're gonna feel hunger. Your cortisol level spikes naturally between 11 and 11.30 every night. So that's why I always encourage my clients to go to bed before 11 o'clock. That's what Stephanie and I were just talking about. Okay, one a very good point. Um, leptin, good, yes, leptin is an important hormone. A lot of people come to us with about hormone questions and issues, um, you know, typically it's thyroid or, you know, estrogen all kinds of stuff. I love talking about the hunger hormones. Very important to understand. Um, yeah, my late night mom time is necessary. I get that, I totally get that. Um, you know, but what I find too is like how much night time do you really need? How much night time is like watching a show or scrolling on Instagram or, you know, it's dead time, right? I'd rather you have more bedtime than dead time. Dead time is like, kind of like waste of time. So it's, it's, you know, that's an honest conversation to have with yourself. Yeah, right? Like how can we, you know, optimize our time better? All right, um, utilize fat stores, another benefit of intermittent fasting. So for example, let's say you have dinner, you know, the night before, next morning you wake up, you do a workout, you go for a walk, whatever you do, your, your morning activities, and then you don't have breakfast till 11 o'clock. So for all that morning activity that you're, you're doing, you're actually utilizing the fat stores in your body and the foods you ate the previous day to, as energy. Okay, so you're utilizing calories already stored in your body. Um, I typically like to work out fasted. I typically work out at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so I like to work I like to work out fasted if I do wake up hungry. So sometimes, for example, if I eat dinner really early the night before, which I typically do, um, you know, I might wake up hungry and I might have like a little snack. But typically I'll work out fasted um, and that's a great way to utilize your fat stores the night before. Um, that's actually one of the biggest things um, with fast cardio, for example, is doing it early and utilizing your fat stores as well. Um, but also keep in mind, you could be doing fast cardio at five o'clock in the afternoon as well. So for example, if you, in order for your digestive system to like fully be pretty empty, you need like five to six hours. So if you eat at 11 a.m. and then go work out at 5 p.m., right, that's six hours that's gone by, that's technically, um, you know, working out fasted. Awesome. All right, last but not least, intermittent fasting can help minimize late night eating, okay? Comment below if that's you. And maybe that's one of the incentives you've had to employ intermittent fasting. It's because you know that you're the kind of person at nine, 10 o'clock, you're going for snacks, 
but you're like, if I have a hard stop at 7 p.m., 8 p.m., I'm not gonna eat later. So that can help with weight loss if we're minimizing that mindless, boredom, habitual eating. Totally, okay? <laughs> Guilty one that says, yes, okay. I think a lot of us have been there at some point, okay? So yeah, that is something that intermittent fasting can help with. Now, the consequences of intermittent fasting, and they actually do exist, and my job is to give you guys all of the information, all the facts, and you can choose what you do with it, okay? So one of the biggest reasons why I personally don't always do intermittent fasting, and some of my clients don't, is because it may cause bloating and some GI issues, okay? So for example, like I am somebody that is very prone to bloating. Okay, I have to be very mindful of the vegetables, of the foods that I'm eating, combining portions, so I don't bloat. Okay, um, I guess I have some form of IBS. I've been tested for SIBO, don't have that, but I'm very sensitive to foods. All right, so with people like this, so people with IBS, people with Crohn's, people with SIBO, they are more likely to have some digestive issues if they eat too much at once. So here's what happens with intermittent fasting. So let's say you're not eating until 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, right? And let's say you're up at 6 a.m. This is me, for example. I'm up at like 5.30, 6 a.m. every morning, right? So if I'm up that early and then I'm working out at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and then I'm not eating until 11 o'clock, guess what's going to happen, y'all? I'm starving by 11 a.m. I will eat my right arm and I'll eat this hat. I'm so hungry, okay? So guess what? When I'm eating more food and I have to, obviously slowing down the eating is helpful, but when you're famished, y'all know what happens, right? Guess what happens? My stomach is just like, holy crap, okay? Um, and so when you're consuming more food, and this is typically what does happen when you do intermittent fasting, you're eating more in a shorter window. So even these people that do these like four hour eating windows, these feeding hours, whatever they wanna call it, they're eating a shit ton of food in those four hours. And guess what that does for some people's digestive system? Oh my God, right? So for me, eating a little bit over increments of the day, I know that serves me better. Do I always do that? No, but that's like what I know works for me. And this is why I always say, in CMW we love cookies, but nothing we do is cookie cutter. Everyone we work with is different. Some people we work with love intermittent fasting and it works for them. And others, it doesn't work for them. Okay. Um, another population, and I'm actually speaking to a lot of people here in this group, are women. You know, I find, for whatever reason, men typically are better at following intermittent fasting and sticking to this eating window than women. And don't take this personally, but I work with both men and women, all right? And even like my ex-husband, for example, and myself, right? He was so good at fasting. Like, Alf was amazing. He could wait to eat until like three or four o'clock in the afternoon, and he'd be fine. Sometimes he can go later, and I'm just like, what the hell? Like, I'm starving. <laughs> I mean, granted, my activity level was higher than his, Okay, but even if he was working out, you know, he was just more able to withstand that hunger. And women, okay, we actually are designed to be more fight or flight when it comes to food. And the reason why is because we were built to recreate, okay? Now, I don't have children. I don't know if I'll have children. It's not my cards right now. Right, but this is one of the reasons why women tend to go more into fight or flight mode when we feel hunger. Because if we were carrying and we're hungry, it's our body is you know our body's response to give you food. Because if you're carrying, you want to feed your child. This is facts. Okay. So again, women we can be more sensitive to hunger than men. Okay. And some of you might be watching this and you're like, oh my God, like that makes total sense. Or you might be thinking, no, like I'm really good at fasting. Like I can wait all day long and not eat. That's amazing. Like I wish I had that capacity. <laughs> I don't, right? Heather, what's going on, girl? My husband is like that too. I you know so many men are like that. But then what happens with these men is they'll eat a ton of food in the afternoon. 
right, in the evening. And guess what? Going to bed with a full stomach, not only is that not good for your digestive system, it's not good for your heart. Because guess what happens? How many of you guys wake up exhausted in the morning? You wake up and you're just like, oh, I need like eight cups of coffee to get myself moving. Come on, that's you. Okay. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a health discussion here. My uncle's actually a cardiologist, so I know this. So when you don't digest your food properly, you don't wait a few hours to digest before you go to bed. Okay. Like, and I'm talking about like a big meal. All right, like, like maybe it's like a big steak, for example, or like a massive meal, all right? And you think about it, you go to sleep, and what's happening as you're sleeping, your digestive system is working to digest the food, your heart is working hard to also help your body process and digest this food. Your heart's not digesting food, right? But your heart is keeping your body moving, right? Your heart cannot relax if your digestive system is working at full capacity. And guess what? To digest lots of vegetables. And sometimes people tell me, well, I eat really healthy. You know, I eat like a ton of vegetables. I'm eating like lean protein. Guess what? Like those are two foods that are very hard on your digestive system. The fiber in vegetables is very hard on your system. Now, granted, veggies are very healthy for you. It's good fiber, but it's a lot of work for your system. And then the meat is a lot of work on your system. So your body is working hard as you sleep. So when you wake up in the morning, you're not really fully rested because your system was still working. Does this make sense? Has anyone ever heard this before? Or is this like an aha moment for some of you? I'd love to hear your feedback. Is this like an aha moment? Yeah. And you're probably thinking, well, like, what about the Argentinians? They have a big steak. <laughs> And I was just in Argentina back in March, right? They have a ton of steak and vegetables or whatever in the evening, all right? They eat at like eight or nine o'clock at night, right? But are they going to bed right away? Maybe not. Maybe they're up dancing and doing the thing. I have no idea. Maybe. I was when I went to Buenos Aires. Um, but also, Argentinians, I want to be very honest with you, super high levels of high blood pressure, and there's lots of diabetes in that country, right? And we don't know what their energy levels are like in the morning. They're getting up late, right? They go to bed late and they get up late, right? And then like, well, what about other cultures? You know, they eat late. Look at the French, all right? They eat late, but like, look at their portions, you guys. Look at their portions. Are they eating these massive meals in the evening? No. Portions matter. If you haven't heard that before, <laughs> now you know. Okay, so um, it can cause issues with GI, right? So like I said, people with Crohn's, SIBO, IBS, you know, too much food in short increments is not good for your system, okay? Um, oh, sorry, schedule. Like I was saying before, if I'm up at 5.30 in the morning, I'm doing all these things, and then I have to wait till 11 a.m., I'm like feeling terrible. I'm gonna eat everything. It's, that's not that's why like, I don't always intermittent fast. People ask me if I do it. I'm like, sometimes by accident. Sometimes I won't eat till 11 o'clock if I'm not hungry for some reason or I'm just really busy. Um, I'm very much in the school of thought of eating when you're hungry and not when you're not hungry. And I'm very disciplined in that matter because it's in my head, right? And this is what I really focus on in CMW is getting our mind around that. Not eating when we're told to or not eating when we're told not to. What is my body feeling? Let me learn to tune into my hunger. Cindy knows exactly what I'm talking about right now. She's 50 pounds down for a reason. Okay. She knows. Okay. What else did I write on my board? Oh, may impact mood and energy levels. Okay. So this is what I mean. Like, like for example, getting up super early and then you can't eat till 11 o'clock. How does it affect your mood? I know for me... I'm a hangry human being. And women are more sensitive to that, like I said, right? And then let's say you have meetings and you have activities and you're in this long fast, okay? Absolutely, I know now. Awesome, yeah, okay. 
I don't know. I'm the kind of person, like, I'd rather focus on what I can do and what I want to do versus what I can't do. To me, that's food freedom. That's feeling empowered versus restricted. Well, I can only eat in this window. Well, if I had that mindset, this is just a personal thing. If I had that mindset, I would just be eating all the things I could in that window. Right? But, like, if I knew I could eat what I want, I'll just eat when I'm hungry. Because I'll have this restriction in my head. That might be the former emotional eater in me. I don't know. How do you guys feel about that mentality? How does that resonate with you? Eat when you're hungry and don't eat when you're not hungry. Comment if you feel that way. Do you feel that you do that right now? Or you want to get to that level? I want to be able to only eat when I'm hungry and not eat when I'm not hungry. Any of my girlfriends or my family, they know that's how I am. I'll go out to a restaurant, I'll go to a party. I will not eat when I'm hungry and I will chow down when I'm hungry. <laughs> All right, let's get to the truth about intermittent fasting. It's my favorite part, okay? So you guys can't see that because of the glare. I want to be clear. When I ask people like, what diets have you done that have worked for you? And they'll say, well, I tried intermittent fasting or I'm doing intermittent fasting. I'm like, well, that's not a diet, okay? Intermittent fasting is not a diet. Intermittent fasting is called nutrient timing. And one of my favorite stories to tell is actually about, and I've, I've probably told this story, it's one of my uh, friends, one of my trainer clients, Carolina. Carolina is actually fit golfer girl on Instagram, okay? She has hundreds of thousands of followers, she's amazing. She specializes in golf fitness. I love Carolina so much. Um, her and I have had the same training mentors, we've worked in the gyms together, we love the same foods. But I remember Carolina, she was doing intermittent fasting. She wanted to lean out. Carolina was the kind of girl, she wants to bulk up or lean out, right? And uh, if you see her Instagram now, you're probably like, wait, she was bulky? Like she wanted to at one point. This was like 10 years ago. But anyway, so Carolina, we were working at the gym once at 6 a.m. And she was like, I'm intermittent fasting. I'm like, oh, okay. But it was 7 a.m. And she's like chowing down food. I'm like, oh, isn't like intermittent fasting when you eat later, like 11 or 12, just, well, no, my hours are seven to three, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Cause trainers were up really early. You know, we sometimes have clients at four or 5 a.m. So she's like, I'm gonna eat from seven to three. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, well, what are you eating? And she goes, well, I'm intermittent fasting, but like, I'm still trying to bulk, right? So I'm still eating like pizza and tacos. And you know, she was not eating healthy. And she was like, oh no, I'm not doing this to lose weight. I'm just doing it to like, try to like manage my hunger levels. I'm like, oh, okay. So I love this story because it just shows you like, it's not a diet. It, intermittent fasting does not teach you what to eat, how much to eat, like around your workouts or whatever. It's just about like time. It's all it is. Okay. Um, next thing to know about intermittent fasting, it does not guarantee weight loss because what I just said, right? There are so many factors that affect weight loss. So Cindy's question from the very beginning, and Cindy, I'm sorry, when you first asked it, I was like, I don't know if I'm understanding this properly, but now I get it. So just because you eat the same things in this intermittent fasting window doesn't mean you'll lose weight faster. Not necessarily. You might feel better. Maybe another benefit of intermittent fasting I didn't mention was a lot of people swear that it actually helps them feel less foggy in the morning. Some people really like to fast, because they say it keeps their brain focused, okay? Because um, food tends to slow them down. It makes them feel tired. It makes them feel like sluggish in the brain. And I always say that's from two reasons. One, you're probably eating the wrong foods. Number two, you're eating too much of certain foods. Like wheat, for example. Wheat is an inflammatory. And if you're starting your day with Dave's Killer Bread or a bagel or, I don't know, some wheat-based cereal, there's a great book called Grain Brain. Y'all should read it. He talks all about fogginess in the brain, okay? That can cause you to feel sluggish in the morning. Or maybe you're eating too much of something. I know if I eat too much, I'm tired. But if I eat like the right amount, I feel like I can do anything. But remember guys, we don't only eat for energy. The number one purpose for eating is hunger. Energy is secondary. We can get energy from lots of things. We can get energy from water we can get energy from exercise 
we can get energy from deep breathing. We can get energy from sleeping. We can get energy from just marching in place, shaking our limbs, getting that blood flow, stretching. There are lots of ways to get energy. When people always turn to food for energy, that's a problem because you want to feel hunger. Do you guys understand that now? The difference between eating for hunger and eating for energy? If you eat when you're hungry, you will get energy from it, 100%. But if you're just eating for energy, you're not hungry, there's an alternative to that. Like that 3 p.m. slump. Right? Who gets that slump between 3 and 4 p.m., 3 and 5 p.m.? Sometimes it's hunger, right? If you have like an early lunch. Yeah, if you eat lunch at 11 or 12 by 3 or 4, you're probably hungry. But if you eat lunch at 2 and then 3.30, you're like, ooh, I'm in a slump, blah, blah. This is your BFF. The mid-afternoon walk is great, right? Get some green tea, get some vitamin B. Lots of things to boost your energy levels, okay? So again, it's not a weight loss strategy. You gotta be eating the right food. You have to be moving enough. You have to be sleeping well, as Wanda rec uh, reminded us. Thank you, Wanda, right? You have to have good gut health. You have to rid your body of toxins and crap so your body can like do its job. It's not gonna hold on to things. It's gonna release things. That like brown fat, okay, like all that we all hear about, it loves to hold on to toxins, loves it. Pesticides, chemicals, well, all this crap in the atmosphere, just all this stuff. If the less of that you have in your life, the easier it'll be to release. The fat's gonna have nothing to hold on to. Okay, well, boredom is emotional eating, right? I, I hear this, I have this conversation a lot, you know, and, and I, am a, I am an emotional eater. You know, I used to be a severe emotional eater and that's what helped me build, create my weight and I really wanted to help people overcome emotional eating. Um, but I will tell you guys that one of the top three emotions of emotional eating is boredom. Boredom means lack of fulfillment. So food, we turn to, to feel fulfilled, to feel satiated, right? So the question becomes, how can I satiate myself? What am I missing? What am I lacking? Or what do I feel like I'm lacking? Maybe I'm not really lacking it. Maybe that's just a thought, it's not a fact. What do I want more? What do I what will I appreciate? I don't like the word need or want. I would appreciate more of this in my life. That's what I want you to think about if you're bored or meeting. Okay. I kind of have a whole conversation about bored or meeting. I hear this a lot. I'm a stress eater, personally. Um, way less now than when I was in my 20s. Okay. 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 Back to this. Um, must do consistently to see results. So you guys, I do want to share something and I have lots of friends that, and there's people you'll see on Instagram or whatever, TikTok, whatever platform there is nowadays. I'm not even on TikTok. It scares me to be honest. Um, a lot of people swear by intermittent fasting. They say it helps with their, it minimizes their bloating. So although I was saying in some populations, I didn't say everybody, I never do blanket statements, right? Some people say it really helps them minimize their bloating, right? And it helps them with their brain fog and it helps them with their energy levels and all these things. Absolutely, it can do that. But let me tell you guys something. Those people, they do it consistently, okay? And they're probably eating the right foods and the right portions and they're sleeping and they're moving. They're doing other things well in their life is not just eating in a window. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Okay. Um, and guys, like again, there I cannot stand here in front of you and tell you that intermittent fasting is bad for you because it's not, right? It's a health strategy, as I said. However, I do like to share some potential consequences and again, guys, like it's, I wrote here, temporarily. It might affect your mood temporarily. It's just like you start any kind of like 
cleanse or diet in the beginning, the first week is hell, right? You're cutting out sugar, you're minimizing caffeine, you're, you know, probably cutting out certain things or less of, and you're like, ooh, this is terrible. Um, but you get over it after a while, right? And intermittent fasting is the same. So give it time. Sometimes we just don't have any pain, tolerance for pain or discomfort. The real magic happens when you get out of your comfort zone, right? Johnny, hey, how do you feel about taking something that puts a person into ketosis rather quickly? Okay, so here's the thing about ketosis. Like, yes, and you can actually like pee on those strips to see if you're truly in ketosis because, and just to clarify, you have no idea what ketosis is. Ketosis means that your body is burning ketones as fuel, right? So ketones is something that, and actually your, your, if you pee on these little ketone sticks, it'll show you that your body is um, you know, creating ketones, right? And if you're creating ketones, it means that you're in ketosis. And ketosis means that you're burning fat as energy, okay? And yes, if you're really into the keto thing, that means that we want to be in ketosis because we're going to burn fat more easily Okay, and we'll store everything else, right? And so keto people, fat is your main fuel source, right? So what do I think about taking something to put your body into ketosis rather quickly? Johnny, maybe you can give me an example of something that you would take or you have read about to take to put your body into ketosis more quickly because truth be told, that is not my area of expertise. I am not a keto expert. Um, I am somebody that when I focus more on nutrition, um, and, and, and granted, they don't have any like major health concerns. Now, the ketogenic diet, just so everyone understands why it was created, the keto, a true ketogenic diet where being in ketosis is absolutely imperative for brain function and for health, it was actually designed for children with, um, what was it? They were having epilepsy, right? They were having epileptic seizures. That's what the ketogenic diet was designed for, right? Because being in ketosis actually helped them have less symptoms, less seizures. That's what it was designed for. It's also extremely helpful for people who have chronic severe illnesses, cancer, for example. Diabetes, you know, being on a ketogenic diet, can it help with diabetes? Yes, if it's done properly. I give stipulations, okay? Or if you have a ton of inflammation in the body, cutting out lots of these inflammatory grains can be helpful. And that can help you know, put your body into ketosis if you're doing it properly. So I'm not certain, this is not my area of expertise. I mean, I will always admit when I don't know something. I don't know what you take to put your body in ketosis. I also wanna see that that's not like a marketing ploy. Because anyone that knows me knows that I am skeptic. I don't like a lot of things on the market. The weight loss industry is a $63 billion industry. And I actually had a client, Mona. She might be watching this at some point. Mona, I love her so much. Um, Mona was a PT client of mine for a year. She did my program as well. And um, I spoke with her husband a lot. He would always have questions about like, keto, um, like the keto diet. And he would show me these products he would buy. And I mean, they were expensive too, you know? And, and I think actually one time, now that I'm like recalling this incident, I think he asked me about this powder that was like, oh, this will put me in ketosis. Like to truly put your body in ketosis, you really have to deplete your body of all carbohydrates. That's the only way to do it. So unless you're taking something that will legit like strip your body of carbohydrates, get all the sugar out of your body, that will take some time. Um, I'm not sure what would work. Johnny, I hope I'm answering your question. I feel like, and I don't want you to think that I'm like negating anything you're saying. I'm just like, I don't know. And I also would question that. I would question the validity of that product. If you wanna drop a link to a product or anyone else watching this right now, if you want to drop a link to a product and get my thoughts on it, I'm happy to do that. But like, I'm probably going to not like it. <laughs> this is why like, I don't sell products. I'm not an affiliate for most things. 
The only thing I do really like is my girl Shar's collagen and her centered products. We did a talk a couple weeks ago on collagen. I love that stuff. I feel a difference. Um, that's it. But okay. So last words about intermittent fasting. This is longer than I thought it would be. Sorry. Um, but I hope I'm answering your questions. And I've got some really good questions and comments. And feel free to drop some questions below if you have one or if you're joining late, you know, drop your question below. I'm happy to help you. Um, but the biggest thing I want to say about intermittent fasting is I know you probably know someone in your life or you've seen someone on Instagram or wherever that they swear by and it works. Because yes, there are so many great things about intermittent fasting as I've discussed this evening. But the number one thing I want you to think about is you and your life right? What you do consistently is who you will become. So if you can do intermittent fasting consistently paired with a healthy diet that you can stick to long term and a proper movement regimen that you can stick to long term and you are getting adequate sleep consistently right? And just honoring your body like it's a temple. You're doing all the things. Yes, intermittent fasting, no brainer. Do it. Sure. But do you need to feel pressured to do it because it worked for this person for weight loss? I guarantee you that person was doing more than intermittent fasting just to see weight loss. They probably have all these other things they're doing. And then what happens is then you compare what they're doing to what you're doing or you look at what they're doing and they're like oh well you know i'm counting my calories and you know i'm only eating these eight foods and i'm you know working out two hours a day or whatever it is they're doing and you're like oh wait that sounds terrible like i can't do that so the biggest piece of advice i can give you is to do something that works for you consistently something that is sustainable, something that is stress-free, and something that you feel really proud that you created in your life. And you didn't just follow some trend. Because trends, as we know, don't last. But what you want to last is your the longevity and your health and your system. We rise and fall to the level of our systems. I'm a big James Clear fan, Atomic Habits, my favorite lines. Um, I believe in having systems, not just in the workplace, not just in our family, in our household, or in our relationships, but in our health journey. That's what your habits are. Your habits create systems. And as I said in the very beginning of this talk tonight, first we create our habits, then our habits create us. If this habit of eating from 11 to 7 or 12, whatever your window is, works for you, awesome. Do it. I'd love you to comment below with how it's working for you. If you are just like pushing yourself to do it because you think it's the right thing to do, but you're not really seeing results, schedule a time to talk with me about this. And I will tell you exactly what's really holding you back from feeling more energized, leaning out like you want to and having a sustainable stress-free way of eating of moving of thinking and of living that will work for you long term so you never have to worry about this again because that is the greatest gift you can give yourself is the two c's i call it right clarity and consistency right so before you dive into a trend you just jump on the bandwagon. I want you to think a little bit more. Well, what do I need to be successful? What's going to work for me? Okay. And guys, again, I'm not knocking intermittent fasting. I love it for some reasons. I don't do it consistently, but you know what? I'm healthy and I'm really happy. And I want you to feel the same way. And this is not about me. This talk has nothing to do with me. <laughs> this is about answering your questions and giving you some clarity and support. I'd love to give you some more clarity and support. Okay. So I'm going to drop my link here if you want to schedule time to speak with me. Okay. I'll, you'll tell me exactly what's going on in your life right now, what you've tried for weight loss or what you're trying for your health goals, what's not working for you, you know, your struggles. 
and I'll outline for you exactly what you need to do to get you to where you want to be. From point A to point B. Point B is the best. Okay? Point A is like absolutely lost. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And point B is like best feeling ever. Knowing exactly what works for you and your smooth sailing. This is why Cindy's here. You know, she finished her program a while ago and she's still crushing it. I love it. I love it. Okay. I'll drop my link below for call, booking a call with me. Another option, I'll leave it for you. We just started our summer sizzle yesterday, our eight week group coaching program. You're gonna learn a lot in eight weeks. Okay, there's no one-on-one, -on -one, but there's a ton of group support. You'll get some of our resources. Uh, two nights ago, no, last night actually was a kickoff call and I went over nutrition, how they're tracking their food their first week and gave them all my recommendations. And then we're meeting next Monday. So we meet every Monday as a group. So if you'd like to still participate in that, I'll still let some people in because it's still like day two, technically. So it's still very early on. So I'll drop the link below for that. So you got two options if you want some help. It's pretty awesome. All right. So anyway, if you have any more questions, drop them below. But otherwise, I'm going to run. I got to go for a walk. Got to take my pup out. All right. Get our exercise in. All right. Have an awesome Tuesday. Um, next Tuesday is actually 4th of July, so I won't be doing a talk. I'll be doing a talk next Thursday, actually, which is July 6th. And I'll drop my topic in the group later this week. All right. Have an awesome Tuesday, guys. Bye.